Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Docker Talk from Docker straight to AWS. So today's talk is being recorded and you'll receive a follow-up email with the link in it. Uh, give us about 24 hours to send that out after the call ends. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, submit your questions. If you look over into go to webinar, there's a question section. Go ahead and put your questions in there. It's a little bit easier if you use that instead of chat, we can get all the questions together. And uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll try and answer as many as we can. But um, without further ado, let me turn it over to Chad Metcalf and Carmen Portillo. Uh, Carmen is from AWS and Chad is uh, from Docker here and they're gonna be going through our talk today. Go ahead, guys. Welcome. Carmen, it's good to, uh, to be chatting with you again. It feels yeah, like yeah, only absolutely. a couple of weeks ago that we were doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and and thanks everyone for joining. Um, my apologies. I'm having some webcam issues, so you know you can't visually see me, but I'm here in spirit. And yeah, it's it. It feels like we just did this a couple of weeks ago, Chad, and super exciting to to talk about it again. Um, yeah, exactly. So so with that, so with that said, I'll just introduce myself, and you know we can kick things off. Um, my name is Carmen Puccio. I'm a principal solutions architect here at AWS within the AWS Partner Program. Um, I work with our container partners, specifically I'm Docker's uh, partner solutions architect. I have been for the better part of two years. Um, and prior to working within the AWS partner program with our container partners, I was part of the AWS uh, mass migration team, trying to figure out how to move customers over um, to AWS at scale and you know, making sure that they're following all the best practices that we like to see when customers um, move their workloads over, which is, which is very much in tune with what we're going to talk about here today. Um, so with that said, that's me, um, Chad. Yeah, I'm Chad Metcalf. Uh, you can find me at Metcalf C on Twitter. I have been a Docker for a very long time. I actually don't know how long. It was 2014, I think, but I could be wrong. Uh, so uh, at Docker, I am an architect. I work with our partners, with uh, Amazon. Uh, Carmen and I have worked together on what we're talking about today for, I don't know, a year and a half. So it's really exciting to, to see just how far it's come, and especially since we were able to release it. Carmen, when was uh, Amazon C3? I, I want to say it was July 9th. Um, you, you should be able to go back and see the, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 the conference on Twitch. I think it's still up there, but I'm pretty sure it was the 9th, if memory serves me right. Yeah, so what you're going to see today is uh the progress between the initial beta and where we are today just before uh, sort of just prior to the to the ga here so i'm super excited to to be here and have worked with carmen for the last year and a half to do this and now let's talk about let's talk about what we're actually going to see besides just who's going to talk about it so uh there's going to be some docker and uh lots of folks uh equate docker with uh you know the the, the cool whale his name's moby if you didn't know that um, but really Docker is around simplicity and choice. So let's, uh, I like to talk, talk about it as the developer's commute, right? What's the easiest way to shorten that commute? So, you know, your commute is really all of the time that it takes between leaving your house and actually getting to work and starting to be with something done. So the developer commute, same way, like all of the time you have to spend between just getting everything up and running before you can actually start doing the job that you're really paid to do. So the curly braces that you want to type. So getting environments up and running, uh, working on everything except for that inner loop. And so what can Docker do to make that simpler and also give you the choice to use whatever tools you want to do. And so what we're gonna see today is exactly one of those uh, simple choices that uh, we're making with together with AWS. And so, yeah, when it comes to that, you know, really the goal is to focus on developer team productivity. So let's get your teams onboarded faster. Let's get your teams automated so that everything that you do, you're not doing the same thing. You're not making repetitive tasks. You're not, uh, oh, this worked on my machine, but didn't work on theirs. Uh, and also you're collaborating. So we are, uh, you know, at, Lots of people working from home, lots of people spread out, lots of global teams. How do you collaborate as a group more effectively? And that's that's it for me. I yeah. think now it's gonna I'm gonna hand over to Carmen. He's gonna walk you through sort of some of the AWS side. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, 
very much in line with that. And this slide something that you've probably seen in, in a lot of AWS presentations, but you know, I, I feel like it, it resonates with today's talk. Um, you'll see it referred to as the innovation flywheel. Um, but, but what we're talking about here is we want our customers to experiment and we want them to essentially learn from the, their mistakes. And the faster that they can experiment and collect feedback, the, the thought process is, it, the, the quicker it is to drive growth with our applications, the quicker it is to accelerate those application migrations. Um, because again, it's, you're, it's really about maximizing the value um, as you modernize your application. So you want to essentially have this circular loop. Um, so, you know, again, the, the goal here is to get your idea as quick as possible to market um, in a very repeatable manner. And again, this is very much in line with what we're going to show you here with the with the integration that we've built, where we feel that it's a very light lift to get you from your local development environment all the way through the AWS in a very repeatable manner and a very familiar manner that you're that you're used to um, with the with the traditional Docker tools. Um, I don't think I need to spend a, a super you know long time here, but you know again, what we're typically saying is is you know, when it comes to modernizing applications, we're seeing customers go down the container route. And we're see, we see customers go down the, the serverless route as well inside of AWS. But specifically, you know, we're here to talk about containers, obviously. And, and the thing that, you know, uh, again, that, you know, it, it, that is great to see is when customers are modernizing their applications, they're really looking for the ability to be, you know, really, really agile. They want to be effective in deploying their applications. They want to be effective in building their applications, and they want it to be a very streamlined process. Um, they know that getting those products and services out as quick as possible, it, it goes back to a gain market share. So again, you know, if you think about the way that containers are built, and you think about that, you know, everything's standardized in terms of a packaged application, you know, the code and the runtime, um, and regardless of where you are inside the software development lifecycle, um, it really, really tells that story. Is it's it's a great vehicle to modernize your 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 applications as you move forward to a more cloud native state. And again, you know, similar to what I was just talking about, like I don't necessarily need to hopefully go into the benefits of containers. You're here because you already know that and you're excited about the integration we've built. Um, you know, I, just the, the, the one thing that, that's really, really cool to me in the, in the beta that we've built here is that standardized packaging and being able to essentially take an application and have it just work on your local machine and then take it and change your context and then have it running inside of AWS with essentially no changes, right? So again, you're taking the benefits of container, you know, everything's defined as code. You know, you're having that 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 great vehicle for moving something um, you know, from from your local environment to the cloud, but you're doing it in a very standardized way. You're not necessarily learning any net new skills because we're doing all of that heavy lifting for you. And we'll show that to you as part of the demo. That's right. So just concretely, what does that mean? It just means it's just Docker. It's just Docker run and just Docker compose, right? So, and you should be able to use those things and send that workload wherever you want because it's Docker, it's portable, it's contained. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, just to really quickly fly over it, just so, you know, in case folks aren't familiar, um, this is what we talk about when we talk about the AWS container services. What we'll talk about today and what the integration is specifically focused around is Amazon ECS and specifically Amazon ECS on, on, with, on AWS Fargate. But again, when you're looking at you know, the AWS container services portfolio, our goal is really just to make it the best place to run containers. We want it to be easy for customers to launch their workloads. And we do a lot of, we do a lot of work in making sure that the services that we launch are deeply integrated with the other service inside the AWS cloud to make it essentially easy for you to build your, your containers in a secure manner um, for your production workloads, right? So again, today's, today's talk is specifically around the ECS Fargate integration. Um, but you know, if you have any questions about any of the other things, feel free to throw something into the chat or you can obviously ping me on Twitter and I'm happy to talk about all of the other services we have. So, you know, just to do a, a little bit of a deeper dive on top of AWS or Amazon ECS or Elastic Container Service, um, this was our first container offering. I actually want to say this was launched, I want to say it's 2015, but, but don't hold me to that date. But regardless, this was our first service. And, and the benefit here is the fully managed container orchestrator that allows you to deploy, manage, and scale your containerized applications. 
right? There's a control plane that we operate, and then you're responsible for your worker nodes. And as you can see here, um, it again, it has that deep integration with AWS services. You can put load balancers in front of it. You can run it in various different regions. Um, it's super cool because it has the concept of scaling, both at the application layer and then at your EC2 layer. Um, and then there's also that, that integration with CloudWatch. And that's great, and that's actually something that we're working towards as part of this, this partnership with Docker, or part of this integration, is to make sure that we give you the holistic experience of having you know, the Docker Compose experience work with Amazon ECS. But to start with, as part of the beta, as Chad said, when we launched it about a month and a half ago, or just, just over two, close to two months ago, it was specifically around AWS Fargate. And, and to be clear here, AWS Fargate is now, it, it now means multiple things. And when we talk about Fargate, it, it's, it's really referred to as, as a serverless service. So you'll see Fargate sometimes talked about in the context of Kubernetes or Elastic, uh, Amazon EKS. Um, but you also have Amazon ECS on AWS Fargate, which was the first, you know, the first implementation of Fargate. And really, if you're thinking about what this means, is everything that I just said on the prior slide holds true. It's just that you don't have to worry about running your, your worker nodes or your EC2 instances. All of that is essentially handled by AWS. You only care about your application. Right? So what does it look like to build my application? How do I get a actual container image, whether I store that in something like Docker Hub or whether I store it on something like uh, the ECR? I need essentially a blueprint to get my application up and running, and we do all the rest of the work for you. So in terms of figuring out, you know, you know, the, the, maybe it's that you're worried about things like the isolation model, right? Maybe you're thinking about how am I going to do things like, you know, monitor my application. All of this is essentially integrated with the platform, and you really just have to worry about getting your application up and defining your blueprint, and we handle all of the rest for you. It has some really cool features as well around making sure that your options are, you know, they're really right size. You have the ability to do things like spot instances, you know, if you're really, you know, a cost-conscious customer. But again, the, the, the point I want to hit home is, is you're building your app you're creating what we call a task definition and you're deploying it inside of AWS Fargate, all the rest is on us. And as part of the integration, really all you're worrying about is your Docker Compose environment and building the app in Docker Compose. And then off it goes into AWS with the native integration, which is just, which is super cool to me. Yeah, and that's one of those, uh, that's one of those developer commute shorteners. I think it's actually one of the reasons that we chose Fargate was um, when you're not running something when you docker compose down all the meters stop there's no manager overhead that you have to pay for there's no uh uh there's there's nothing that that stays that stays around because when fargate scales down to zero there's there's no meter to spin um and then on the other hand when you get to work in the morning and you start your you start your loop and you do docker compose up it all just comes back together for you So, so Chad, I mean, so for this slide, maybe we could just you know talk really high level. I, I think folks are familiar with yeah. Compose, right? It's it's been around for a while, uh, but maybe you kind of want to walk through what they're seeing here and how that'll translate into what they're going to see a little bit later today. Yeah, I mean, I think you know just to to go over quickly, right? So Compose is um, well, it it means a lot of things to different people, but the default version is I want an application which is more than one container and I want it to look like this. Compose also does a really great job of just remembering all the flags for Docker run. So lots of people use Compose just for single containers just so that you can remember all of the you know 20 or 30 flags you might have to pass in if you've got environment variables and volumes and you want to tweak ports and all of that. But in this case we're talking about two services the front end and the back end and uh, the front end exposes a port so it exposes 80, and it needs the back end to be up. So in this case, I need uh, uh, start the back end first. When the back end's up, start the front end, and the front end talks on 80. And so this is a pretty common way to say, like, my application is A talks to B, B talks to C, and C just happens to be a database. Um, so this is what we're going to see a little bit later. We're going to see a two-container a two, uh, two service going out to both local and, and ECS. And it'll be written and composed. So as you can and, see here, like we're, we're basically 
launching that application. Everyone's familiar with the the you know the simple up command, and as you can see here, that back end is starting. That front end is dependent on the back end, and and that's starting as well. Um, you know, you hit the you hit the local host, and and there's the magic, right? But to the, to that end, when when I was talking about AWS Fargate and getting an application running in the cloud, and and Chad is right, we targeted Fargate because we wanted it to be a light lift, you know, to the to the talk's title, simplifying the developer experience. How can we make this as easy as possible? And you know, I mentioned Fargate essentially being considered almost a serverless service, or it is a serverless service in in our in our opinion. There's still things that a developer would need to learn if they were going to just go do this themselves, right? I like to call these the surrounding constructs. Um, you can call them primitives inside of AWS, whatever, whatever the terminology that resonates with you. But that's the thing that we wanted to expedite. That's the thing that we wanted to make easier. So if you think about the, the resources that it typically takes to get something up and running inside of AWS, you need your VPC. Maybe you have one, maybe you don't, right? You need to go create that actual cluster for you to run this workload. Um, ECS has a context of a service, and then inside of that service is the task definition, which isn't a straight map, or wasn't at the time, a straight map to something like a Docker Compose file. Um, inside that task definition, it is the blueprint of how you get your application to run, um, but it was definitely a new skill set that a developer would have to learn. Um, and then on top of that, you would have to think about the IAM. Um, you know, constructs in terms of like, what is this application allowed to talk to? Can it go pull from a container registry? Um, when I'm instantiating this, this, this container inside of my ECS service, maybe I want to front it with a load balancer. How do I go set that up and then wire that in? What are the security groups in terms of who's allowed from the, from, you know, the ingress point of view? What's allowed to talk to what? And then lastly, you know, we have that native integration with, with CloudWatch inside of AWS Fargate. Um, but how do we wire that up? So again, you know, Fargate is a very simple service in terms of getting your workload up and running, but you still need to learn all of these skills, or at least you had to. Now again, as part of this this beta, it's you know, or or soon to be a GA, it's it's now seamless, right? Like the the, the goal was for you to only have to worry about your compose file, and then this 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 light lift then occurs where we handle all of this with essentially what we're thinking is a reasonable default. Um, how can we set this up, you know, in a manner where you're ready to go um, just with a simple up command? Obviously, if you needed to tweak some of these parameters, we're providing that ability to do it. But the goal was essentially to get you from your local developer environment through Compose and then straight into AWS Fargate with that light lift. Yeah. And it's crazy how far we've come. Uh, so it'll be an interesting, interesting thing to, to get to show. Just yeah. in two months. I mean, yeah. It's really, it's really exciting. Yeah. So, so maybe Chad, we could talk a little bit about the the compose spec because as as part of this, right? There's there's a lot of cool things that we can talk about, but I think the open sourcing of the spec, I think that was the precursor, in my opinion, to a lot of this work occurring. Um, maybe we could talk about some of that, um, and then we could talk about some of the, the the components about what's coming soon as well. Yeah. So, compose has always been part of Docker, but it was always just part of Docker like literally the spec lived inside of uh, one of Docker's repositories. And what we realized was that like lots of people wanted to extend this spec or wanted to build on it. And so, um, you know, we would see folks that had composed like uh, syntaxes. And then we realized that it wasn't actually helping the community to just have composed sitting inside of Docker. What we needed to do was open that spec up uh, and make it so that the community could gather around it and make it something more than just Docker. So that's what we did. And we worked with folks like Amazon and other uh, cloud providers to make that happen. Um, so you can go to compose-spec.io and you can go see and participate on that spec. So, you know, are there new verbs that are going in, new stanzas? Um, uh, you'll see some extension points which are in the spec uh, because one of the things we wanted to do was whenever you have a, a tool like Compose, it's really easy to just to keep putting stuff in it. And then eventually you get a massive YAML file that nobody can read. And so we wanted to balance the simplicity that was already in Compose with the power of the various uh, 
orchestrators or other abstractions that we were abstracting with Compose. So what you're going to see today is uh, a way that we we call them the X parameters, where Compose doesn't need to know what that parameter is, but the back end that's implementing what Compose is doing, it, it does need to know. And so you can have a way to extend sort of additional metadata and pass that through to the back end, which knows what, how to implement the Compose spec and then takes that data and does something with it. So in the, in the, what you're going to see later is, is a way to log in to uh, a, a Docker Hub. And we didn't want to hard code that into the spec, but we wanted to get that information to the orchestrator. Um, so that that's in there. Um, the one that I'm really excited about is at the, at the top of all the Compose files, you'll see this version string and there's version two and version three and version three versus version 3.8. Um, and one of the things I'm excited for is that's going to go away soon. Uh, and there's just going to be Compose. And Compose itself is going to be version aware and um, that we're merging sort of this, some of the differences between version two and version three. And that's a big thing that's coming that I'm super excited about. Um, and uh, I think within, within Compose, those are the, the two big things that are coming. Oh, well, Compose is also getting built into Docker. So lots of folks know uh, Docker dash compose, what you're going to start seeing is Docker space compose because Docker is going to is going to build um, compose inside of Docker and then you won't have to have a separate tool and also we're using this as a way to integrate more closely with things like AWS, which you'll get to see today. Yeah, that, that last one to me is really cool. I always thought that uh, of them as two separate tools, right? Something, two things that you would have to go and install on your laptop and that the fact that it'll be bundled together is, is fantastic. Um, I wanted to highlight just at the bottom, and we'll, we'll you know, give you you folks on the on the webinar um, a link to the GitHub repo where you can go take a look at issues and you know open up um, essentially you know what you want to see. Um, but to that end, the the EC2 launch type support coming for ECS um, that is something we are actively working on amongst many other things. Um, yeah, you know, that you saw when you know we first announced this back in July. Um, you know, please, please, please go take a look at that roadmap when we post the link a little bit later. Um, tell us what you want to see specifically around the, the EC2 piece, because we're still in that, you know, in that design phase. We have a good idea what we think the reasonable defaults will be, um, but we would love to hear back um, from, from the community on this one just to just to make it really, really easy for you to use. So, again, if you think about that, that flywheel that I was talking about earlier, you know, the goal of this all along was to get this in your hands and then have feedback from from the community so we can make it a product that, that is is completely usable and something that you know folks folks are happy and want to use um right. so 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 with that said you know and and you know chad maybe we talk a little bit about you know what the experience was like as part of the initial beta um especially with the the plug-in model versus where we think it's going to go or where we see it going in, in the in the very very near future um in terms of commands yeah so this is the original beta experience is that you used a plugin called ECS to, to do most of your work. So Docker ECS Compose or Docker ECS Setup. Um, and what we're gonna show today, I'm really excited about, just launched to the public, uh, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday in the Docker Desktop Edge version. Um, it is the new flow that just has this integrated in. So you will just type Docker Compose and there won't be an ECS plugin anymore. Uh, and you'll just do Docker context and there, uh, there, won't be a, uh, there won't be anything else. So I'm super excited that, that that is actually in the edge version of Docker Desktop and you'll be able to play with it today. Uh, and, you, and we'll give out the, the link to the demo uh, repo where, I'm, where I've got the Compose file and all the different bits and bobs for the demo we're gonna do today. And you will be able to just follow along and uh, it's super exciting. Yeah. But let's talk about context because this is, I think, the, this is like the first slide that we actually talk about context. Um, context has been around in Docker for about a year and a half, I think. Um, it originally showed up when people had lots of engines, and you might have an engine on your desktop, you might have an engine in EC2, and it used to be you would use docker uh, underscore host to change the you know the you'd actually put an ip address in there you might have to set tls up that was a terrible experience 
we came up with a way to make that a little bit better with Docker context. Uh, and then you would switch context. I have a local engine, I have a remote engine. And what we realized about, well, actually when we started working with, with uh, Carmen and the rest of the folks at AWS was, and what we, what we approached AWS was, was like, we think that context is really powerful because it doesn't just have to be an engine. It can be anything that can run a container. So what if we made a context that could go to ECS? And so that's really what this is about. Context becomes around like, where do you want to run your container? And so if you go to your Docker desktop now and do Docker context list or Docker context uh, LS, you will see the context you have. And chances are you, you probably just have one. You might have two if you're already using the beta. Um, and the, that's default. And what the default is, is it's just your, it's your Docker desktop. And then adding that, you'll be able to switch contexts, which just says, I want to go here or I want to go there. And we're going to see this demo a little bit later. Um, and because we're building all this in, all of the tools can then become context aware. And so then they know that in this context, these these things are available and these aren't. So for example, right now in the ECS context, there's not a build available. Uh, you can't Docker build. That context isn't aware of how to do that. Um, we're working on it, but right now it's not. So you, but we'll show how you can get around that with just switching your context really quickly. Um, and I think that's that is really the the basis for this entire like workflow is just where do you want to run it and let me switch on the fly. And, and what's super cool about, you know, essentially the the, the context um, switch, if you will, um, once you go to that, you know, that that AWS context um, under the covers, what we're doing, and you can see it in the bottom point uh, bullet point there, um, it's cloud formation, right? So, you know, if you're familiar with with a lot of the, a lot of the tools that AWS puts out, um, cloud formation is a is a super easy way. Um, for you to create resources inside of AWS, um, you know, doing things like you know a, any type of CRUD operations, um, it just handles all of that natively. Um, and and the thing that you know, again, to to stress here is you could have done this yourself, right? So to to the point that I made earlier, where it was like, hey, you know, go create a VPC, go create the load balancers, do all of those things. You can do it. You would obviously do that with a tool like CloudFormation. But writing cloud formation is, is, again, a net new skill that your development teams would have to learn. So wouldn't it be cool if we do all that for you? So when we, we basically say, let's do a Docker Compose up or a Docker ECS Compose up based off your Compose file, we're taking all of that and we're mapping that to a cloud formation stack inside of your account. And to, and to me, that's just that's just fantastic because again, it's making that that super you know that super light lift, if you will, from from your local de de desktop into AWS. Yeah, and uh, you know, as part of that, there is a capacity to bring your own, right? So in yep. the we're not going to demo that today. We're actually going to demo it in a in a live stream soonish. Um, is that you know how could you bring your own? So maybe you you work at a shop that developers don't don't build their own ECS clusters. There's a central org or, or some, some other IT org that, that's responsible for that, but they can give you one. You know, how can you bring your own? And so again, in that choice thing, the, you know, maybe you already have tools. Maybe you use CloudFormation or you use another tool and that's how you provision your ECS clusters. You should be able to do that and we should be able to, to use that. So the goal here though, is to give people an out of the box uh, and also to, uh, best practice experience, right? So the cloud formation that we built, we worked with AWS to make sure that we were doing things in in the best way possible yeah. for most users. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. And and maybe in the demo, I'm not sure if you're going to show it or not, but the ability to export the cloud formation, you can inspect it, you can visualize it, you can share it with another team if you'd like to. Um, but the best practice that, that Chad's referring to what we're doing is, you know, the concept of least privilege, right? So like maybe you're interacting with something like potentially a secret, right? Um, you obviously want to fine tune that down so you're only interacting or allowing um, that that resource to interact with that arm. Um, so we scope everything down to, to least privilege um, to get you started with a, you know, a very secure workload. Um, so again, su super exciting stuff. And, you know, if there's time in the demo, maybe we can showcase that, that piece. Um, so, so with that said, Chad, maybe you go through the uh, the beta overview or 
soon to be soon to be GA overview or around like what what the experience looks like, um, and and then we can you know, we can get into the demo I think soon. Yeah, so this is this is actually we can just talk about it in the context of what you're going to see, right? So I have a Docker desktop uh, running on it's it just so happens it's running on a Windows box running the new WSL2 backend. Um, I have an Amazon account uh, all pre-wired. I need to make sure that I refresh my creds because I use a federation. I don't want that to time out. Um, uh, and we're going to do uh, two. We're going to do a Python Flask app, and in this case, it's a it's a GoLang app with a backend. But we're going to do basically the same thing. We're just going to swap out the technology because part of that simplicity and choice is you should be able to do this for whatever stack you want. So you can do it for GoLang or you can do it for Python. Um, and you're going to see a flow of I'm going to do some development work, then I'm going to test that, and then I'm going to send that to uh, Amazon, and I'm going to actually I'm going to send the images to Hub, and then I'm going to send those I'm going to send that workload to to Amazon. And the flow is pretty simple. It's I'm going to have the Docker CLI up. I'm, I'm going to use the terminal. I'll just get that going. I'm going to use the context for AWS. I called mine ECS, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to Docker compose up because we don't need to use Docker ECS up because I'm using the brand new version from two days ago. Um, and that's going to go into Fargate. So I'm super excited to, to yeah. see that. Yeah. And it's super easy, right? Like that, that's the flow. So that's all, the flow. Of those things, that's it. That, all of those things are just handled, which is, which is fantastic. Um, and this is what you would see, right? I think that this was very much the original version. I saw a newer version just recently where this has a little bit more uh, cosmetic to it, but but under the covers, to my point before, you know, it is all cloud formation. You're you're visualizing each one of those resources that we're handling for you right here as as part of this this, this integration, right? So again, task definitions, security groups. Um, what does all of that look like? Uh, you know, you can obviously go inspect that cloud formation. You can go into the console and look at it. You can inspect it, you know, locally through um, through Docker through the Docker Compose integration, where you can just spit out the JSON. But the point is, is you know, when you do an up, we're creating all of those things for you. Um, and then, you know, just to visualize Chad stack, what it would look like inside of AWS, maybe, you know, a, a visual would help a little bit more. You know, we typically talk about a VPC. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to do a VPC that stretches across multiple availability zones. It's going to create your subnets for you. Um, it'll go and create that, that cluster for Fargate to essentially run. Um, and then it'll deploy those services, right? So again, like, you know, the, the context of pulling an image from something like Docker Hub or pulling an image from something like um, ECR, you know, you define that, but then we're basically creating those services um, based off the compose spec mapping to a task definition. So it's going to create the task definition for you um, and then spin those up. Um, something that's super cool here, and you can see it, and we haven't talked about it yet. Um, we handle service to service communication for you as well, um, because, you know, all modern apps are typically composed of multiple services, right? And we we have all of this wired up for you with the concept of cloud map. So if you haven't, you know, played with cloud map or you're not familiar with it, um, think of it as a, a resource discovery service where you can do things like defining names for your application, um, and then that's how traffic's going to route. Um, so again, all of this is just wired up for you. You're not defining anything other than defining a service in your compose file, you know, front end versus back end, and then we're going to handle the rest for you. Um, we do, you know, IAM roles for you. We wire up the um, the task definition to to route to the, the logs to Amazon CloudWatch, um, and we also put the security group around these services. So again, like who's allowed to talk to it? What are the rules? Um, Last, last but not least, how am I going to interact with it? We create the application load balancer for you, and that'll route the traffic to to your application. Um, so, with that said, I think this was the last slide, Chad. I think uh, you know we. Yeah, can this is basically the, this is the this is the ready for the demo. So I'm yeah. super and, and this is old too. This is actually from the beta experience where what you're seeing here was um, the IP address, and it, that has since changed. So we should definitely show we should definitely show that and show the get the the load balancer DNS name um, and show how cool that that integration is. Yeah. So uh, do you want to hand me presenter and I will start showing my slides. Uh, the moderator might be able to do it. Let me see if I can figure out the, the change presenter. Well, give presenter. 
There we go. To I can pass it to you. There we go. All right, we're gonna show my screen. see. Can you see my screen? Can you see a terminal? I can. Yep. Okay, great. Is the text, is the big enough? I think so. I okay. Think so. so let's start with some things that are different. Um, so for folks in the audience that have seen this, uh, there will be some, some new stuff. But we're going to look at Dr. Compose. Um, I'm I'm doing I split this up a bit so um, I will I will send this out the the link for this this uh, URL but I've added some nuts some new stuff so I've added um, supports for secrets so we added support for secret in uh, a, one of the beta releases between when this originally launched and now so I I have a kind of a hacky secret thing um, in here. Uh, I also I added, um, let's see, what did I add? Oh, I added a, a better inner loop experience. So if we look at Docker uh, Compose Dev, um, I'm doing a volume mount for the, for the dev version, uh, which makes sure that we can get that sort of like uh, that really cool on reload. So if you change a file, it automatically reloads the application. I got that up and running, and we're using that secret now. So before we weren't using any secrets, um, and this is the uh, this is the Compose Dev app, um, and then I've got the the production app, which is basically exactly the same, except it has this pull credential. And so this is what we talked about earlier with those X parameters. Um, we have a we have a pull secret that we put in so that um, AWS can store the secret and know how to pull from hub. Uh, one of the things that has confused some folks is when you run ECS uh, versus locally, uh, ECS can't see your image cache. So if you haven't pushed that image somewhere, ECS has no idea how to find it. Um, so you can push it to hub, you can push it to ECR, but it's got to be somewhere that ECS can see. Um, and so we'll show what that looks like. Um, but maybe let's just show some of the uh, the new typing. So there is not a Docker ECS anymore. There is um, there is a Docker secret though. Uh, so if you'll remember that used to be Docker ECS secret, that has now become Docker secret. Um, and if we do Docker secret LS, oh, oh, so this is a good example. Um, I'm not in a context that knows how to do Docker Secret LS. I'm in default. So if you see in the bottom corner of my screen, it says default with the little whale icon. That's to remind me that I'm actually in uh, in my default. So I'm going to do Docker ECS. I'm now going to go back and look at the secrets. And so there's my secret. And what you'll see here, back to Carmen's point about um, let's do it the right way, the secret's stored in Secret Manager, and we had a. Uh, I actually created it with Docker Secret Create, and uh, you can. We're actually going to create another secret as part of this um, automatically for you. Um, but this is where the the Docker Hub token comes from. Um, so I think you know it's pretty exciting to see this to see all this work. Um, so let's let's look at the application itself and see what's going on here. Um, Docker file. Um, I did a I did a multi-stage build for this one um, because I think it's it's kind of cool to show something really realistic. So this is a multi-stage build that has a separate stage for testing and a separate stage for production. Um, we're not going to demo that for for this particular bit, but it's when you go and see the application um, to try at home, you'll be able to see. Uh, something that's much closer to what you would actually use in production. And so that's one of the things I really wanted to do for the next version of this demo was, was to have something really realistic. Um, and so you'll see it's just basically a Python 3 app. Uh, and so let's actually take a look at it. 
Uh, it's fairly simple. Um, we are going to use Redis. Um, you'll notice that there is a there is a uh, a new little secret uh, to get the audience, um, which is if this path exists, uh, go ahead and grab the the data in that path. To run secrets just happens to be where Docker mounts secrets. So when we do Docker Compose, we're going to have a secret for that. And when we run it in ECS, we're going to get that exact same experience and that exact same secret. Um, so that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, we're going to do a, the, the root route. Just does a very simple thing. It shoves a timestamp into Redis, and then it asks Redis for all the timestamps back. And it renders that out into, into the HTML. Uh, we also pass over the audience so that uh, so that we can show that the secret actually works. Normally, I would use the secret probably to secure Redis or something, but for the sake of the demo and making it easier to see that the secret's changing, uh, I went ahead and just uh, just did uh, this. Um, so let's see what this would look like. I'm going to do uh, I'm going to use make because it makes it easier to do all the typing. Um, but let's let's look at what happens when I type make. So uh, at the top, you'll see there's a dev, and I'm going to do Docker Compose, and I'm going to do up, and I'm going to have Compose do the build for me. Um, there's the way to do unit tests. Uh, I've got the create ECR in here, so if you want to use ECR when you do this at home, you can. Um, and we're going to do some builds. And one of the things that's really interesting is um, I'm going to leave my context in in ECS from now on. Um, but like I said, build doesn't work in ECS. Uh, it only works in default. But what I've done here is I've said, hey, when you do build, uh, go ahead and switch the context for this one command to the default and go ahead and build that for me. And the same thing when you when it comes to pushing. Um, down here. Uh, at, if we go look at the top real quick, just to just to uh, see some of these variables. Um, you know, I I just put the secret in here, um, and I've got my the thing like my registry ID when I use ECS or sorry ECR. Um, but but I'm gonna have compose up, and I'm gonna you know tell them to to go. Uh, one of the things I also do here is I I make the deploy. Uh, dependent on pushing to hub because I often forget to push to hub. So I want to make sure I do that. So uh, deploy will do that for me. Um, so let's go see what this workflow actually looks like. We're going to do uh, make dev. Uh, and I'm in the wrong, in the wrong uh, default. So we'll do, uh, we'll do that again. And it's going to spin this up. And it's up and running, went pretty quick. Um, it did it did the builds for me, or it did the build of uh, the app for me. Uh, I did need to build Redis because I just pulled it down from, from Docker Hub. Um, and it's up on port 5000. So if I switch over here and go to port 5000, We'll see that there's a timestamp. I'll make this bigger for you all. Um, and I can click the timestamp button and timestamps get injected. And um, you also see that this is a demo for Chad. Um, why is it a demo for Chad? Uh, it's a demo for Chad because that's what the secret is. Um, but let's go ahead and change that secret. Uh, So we're going to get a demo for Carmen. Uh, and so now let's go back to the, we'll set this up again just to show it working. Um, also, it's kind of fun. Uh, one second. Oh, I see what it did. Okay. I got you. So let's do uh, Docker Compose. And we'll do make dev. All right. 
so when we go back here and reload this, now the demo for Carmen has changed. So the secret changed and now we have this going. This application works how I want it to. So now I want to deploy it to the cloud. Um, so how would I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to go down here, turn this off. I'm going to switch my context. So I'm going to do Docker context, use ECS. Um, just so you can see what I've got, I'm going to do Docker context LS. I've got two, I've got the default and I've got ECS. ECS is going to head to US West 2. It's just close to me. Um, and so now let's do um, Docker comes up. So for those of you who have seen this demo between its launch and now, you've seen us type Docker ECS compose. Um, I'm super excited that this, um, oh, let's do make deploy so that make can fill in all the, the variables for me. Um, make build. All right, so it's pushing it to hub. Now um, it's gonna actually start building this in, in ECS. So you'll see, this is a different example, uh, sorry, UX. I like this one a lot. Uh, this is more like the build kit uh, UX. Um, it, it times each individual step. So where it can parallelize steps, it does that. Uh, I'm going to guess that the load balancer is going to be the longest step. I'm just, just from experience, that's what I'm going to guess it's going to be. Um, it goes fairly quickly. Um, and let's go see what's happening because I can look at it here or we can go to ECS and see what's happening um, over here. So here's the cluster. It's coming up. Um, so let's do some cloud formation. So the creates in progress, we can see the resources that are getting created. Um, so here's the log group. Let's save that for a little bit later. Um, there's the ECS cluster. Here's the security group. We can ch check that out for a second. What else can we look at that's kind of cool? Um, I'm gonna look at the task definitions in a minute, um, but this is all just, it's just, uh, it's just cloud formation. And uh, we'll look at the, we'll actually look at the raw cloud formation because Carmen can tell us some cool stuff about that. Um, let's look at, so here's the security group. Here's the VPC. Um, if we go look at the security group, you'll see that we, uh, this is the port, right? So that's the port that the application sits on. So the cloud formation went ahead and, and opened that port for us. Um, Let's go look at this. Um, we've got one of the uh, the backend service up. We can actually go see that specific task definition um, and look at it. This is one of the things I think that lots of people really take, I don't wanna say take for granted, but they, they, they miss on just how important this is. You can write this task permission all, if you want to. Um, just like any other thing, it, there's a lot of intri uh, intricacy here, right? You have to know a lot of different pieces. Um, or you can just use Docker Run or Docker Compose and we'll take care of this for yeah. you. Um, I think that's really part of the power here. And also the CloudFormation too, because CloudFormation is pretty complex. Um, but you get the best of both worlds because if you've got folks that do that, you can use it. And if you, uh, so you, you get that, the, the best of both in this. Um, let's go back to the cluster and see what's happening here. So one of the services looks like it's up and running. Um, the back end, and that makes sense because we want the back end up front. So we can go check out things like the logs and you can see logs in, in this, it's ready to go. It looks like Redis. Um, what, else is, what else can we show? Um, I think, I think real, really quick, Chad, while, while yeah. we're, I, I, it's because it looks like it's still creating. It's still, um, it's still building, yeah. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things that, you know, we, we've talked about are the X parameters. And, you know, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Um, I think they're they're documented up on the, the Docker site. But I think at this point, like you're allowed to do things because you showed the security group, right? We are creating that for you. I'm pretty sure you can pass that through now, correct? Where it's like X A W S security group. Um, you can pass in. Maybe you already have a load balancer. Because our thought process here was, you know, there are teams out there that have these resources pre-provisioned for them. Um, so, right. you know, how would we get that? mapped back to you so i'm pretty sure if, if memory serves me right and you know yell at me if i'm wrong i think it's cluster vpc load balancer security group and is it secret is secret the last one yep. i'm trying to yep yep okay. those are the ones so here's the compose spec uh we talked about this so you can go here and and uh participate you can also jump into the compose spec so let's see we want the actual specification um if we go look at um, and the reason here, I bring that up while Chad's looking for it, I'd love if folks could give feedback on what else they typically have in their environment pre-provisioned. Like anything that is in this surrounding construct, if you will, of AWS resources um, that would make it easier for you that you know you you have to use inside your environment. Maybe it's a security group, which we already do, but maybe it's something else, right? So that would be that would be super cool if you could open up an issue on that. Um, just to give that that feedback. That's one that you know is of of great interest. Yep. And the, uh, actually, so here's uh, here's the extension bit right here, and, and sort of all of the different pieces about extensions. So um, hopefully, you guys actually see. Do you still see my compose spec, or do you see something else? No, I see that. I see the uh, the GitHub repo for the compose spec. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, so let's go back to the CloudFormation stack and see, oh, it's done, great. So we're gonna go back to the command line now. What timing. And we're gonna, um, let's say that I didn't wanna go to the, uh, to the console and I just wanted to use Docker. How could I do that? Well, you could do um, Docker compose PS and you could see what's running. And so we can see that there's the services, the back end and the front end, and actually we can get the IP address for the for the service. We could do Docker Compose logs, and we will get the same log experience that we had when we ran it locally. Um, you'll also notice that there's this little uh, front end secrets init container, which is, uh, it's the way that we're, we we get the secrets in there. So the secret, well, the secret worked, uh, hopefully. Um, so uh, it injected my classified secret into run secrets classified. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I think that's mostly it. Oh, there is one more. And I wanted Carmen to show this because yeah, yeah. I know that this is a big deal. So this is Compose Convert. Uh, I'm really excited about this. So I'm gonna turn this Compose file into, uh, Oh, that's right. Hold on one second. This is me being too clever for my own good. Um, I need to look at the uh, make file real quick. Um, so let's see. Let's do make. I want, I want this. We're going to do on the fly coding and we're going to do convert. And we're going to take these out. And we're going to do Docker Compose. So now I'm going to do make convert. And we get the entire um, cloud There's formation. your cloud formation. Yeah. And you so, actually, if you, if you scroll down the, the policy arm that we were talking about before, right, you can see how okay. we're, yeah, it's <laughs> per, per, Perfect segue, right? You you can see how we're scoping things down, right? So so again, you know, it, it's very much around making sure that we're not just blindly creating resources for you. We're creating resources for you with that least privilege in mind. Um, obviously, this is you know again a great opportunity for us to to hear from the community in terms of what you would like to see. You know, how could we pass things in? 
um, we've talked about the the concept of you know if a, a user wanted to create a, um, a security group and how would they you know open that up to a specific site or block range um, versus you know the hey I want to bring my own security group um, those are the kinds of use cases that that I'd love to hear about right so so again you know we're doing all of this for you um, but again we're we're definitely looking for the feedback from from the community in terms of you know this would make this so much more you know easy for me to adopt in my environment um, but with that said yeah that 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 power to me is great because you could just take that cloud formation template and then you can go pass that off to your other teams um, because to Chad's point maybe they do deploy using cloud formation you know in your production environments or just downstream in the software delivery lifecycle you can just export that and pass that down to them and let them run with it which I think is fantastic yeah. So let's go look at this application. So I'm going to go to the load balancer. So, you know, this long uh, URL, which you could always see name to something easier. Um, and the application is up and running. And it works just like it does on my laptop. I can click the timestamp um, and watch the timestamps roll in. Um, this demo is for Carmen. Uh, so the secret went across, and what happened there? It's it's kind of it's kind of magic. So we took we took the secret and we treated it the same in, in both ways. And in in that case, it was just a demo, uh, right? Like it's a a developer sort of secret where I have it in a text file in a in a on my laptop. But I but Compose did the right thing. In you know production, you would talk, do what Carmen's talking about. You would create that in Secrets Manager the right way, so either via console or via some other tool. And then you would tell Compose this is where your secret is when you go when you go to production. Um, but you want that same experience where it just works locally or remotely. Um, and I think the one there's two last things to show. Um, so we could show the Docker Compose logs for this to see that the logs are coming in. Um, and see the, the timestamps. So here come all the timestamps. Um, sometimes we see we see timestamps from folks on the, the webinar. Uh, yeah. Click it in here, but uh, we don't have any of those today. I think the uh, the URL was too long. Um, but we can also do uh, the the closing. So this was a great demo. I thank everybody for coming, but it's time to go home now. So I'm going to compose down this environment. And we're gonna tear the whole thing back down. And so we're gonna break down all the different pieces and parts, and we're gonna leave a clean environment when we go. And so I think this is a really great way to show the end of that developer commute. Like it's time for me to go home. I wanna shut everything down. I don't wanna leave any meters spinning. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And in the course of you know 10 minutes, we deployed a, a an application to my laptop with a secret. And then we redeployed that into ECS, having built that cluster from scratch. Um, and we're gonna tear it back down in that same amount of time. So I think that just really goes to show like the power of simplicity and, and this integration for uh, you know helping developers go from code to cloud as quickly as possible. Yeah, well, well said, well said. Um, I think we're down to about like a minute, Chad. So, you know, we had next steps for folks to learn um, more about the experience. You've already shown the Compose specification. Um, really quick, maybe if you want to bring up the GitHub repo, just where folks can open up issues. Um, sure. Yeah, see if we can squeeze so that in in the next 30 GitHub seconds. let's go to GitHub and Docker, and then it's the, um, if you want to talk about how you want things to look, let's go to the roadmap. Uh, that's where you can talk about like, hey, this is how I, I really wish that this would work this way, or, uh, you know, you don't have this feature, I need to tweak this knob, please, like, help me out. Um, and you can also find, there are some others in here, there's labels for the ECS integration. Um, the other one is, is if you have issues, um, right now it's, you can, it's still called the ECS plugin as we figure out where it's going to go next, but, uh, you know, naming in software is hard. So go here and file an issue here if you have an issue with with the integration. Okay. Um, and uh, other next steps. Uh, so we were going to have time for questions. I think we're going to run out of time for questions today. 
but we are going to do a live stream with the questions that you put in chat in two weeks time on Docker Run. So go to Docker's uh, YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Docker Run and sign up so that you can get uh, notified next Wednesday, 10 a.m. or not next Wednesday, Wednesday the 16th of September, 10 a.m., two Wednesdays from now, um, we'll, do, we'll do questions from this, this stream then. Um, and we'll also send out all of this by email uh, at the end of this uh, when we send out the recording. So I think that's it. Uh, Carmen, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Um, you know, super excited about this, and you know, I can't wait to hear the feedback from from the folks out there. So thanks, thanks yeah. again. Thank thanks you. everybody. Uh, we'll send out a live. Uh, we'll send out the replay in an email and about give us a little about 24 hours. But thanks everybody for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks Chad and Carmen. It was awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. See y'all.